So before we get into the content of today's video, I got to explain a little bit of how I got here. It really started about five years ago. I put a quick time performance cutout on my 300ZX. Everything was good for the first couple of years until I bent the valve for the first time. So with these quick time cutouts, they're expensive. They are made nice. The quality is good. The problem with them is these valves cannot take any kind of two-step or backfire. So the first time I bent it, it was before I had two step on the 300ZX and it was a backfire for whatever reason. It bent this valve like a taco. They're rebuildable. You can buy the shafts and the rebuild kits. I think they're like 30 bucks, but kind of gets old after a while, taking them apart, rebuilding them, putting them back on. Also, another thing that kind of sucks about them is they're slow. So you have the electronic, you have a switch on your dashboard, you hit the switch, hold it, it opens up. Takes about, I don't know, 20, 25 seconds, which isn't a long time, but when you need to get it shut, it's a long time, especially if a cop's going by and you got wide open exhaust. So last spring, I decided I wanted to go with a boost activated uh, cutout. So I bought this. This one is a $40 cutout that I welded flange two to bolt to the same flange that the quick time performance one bolted to and then i welded a downpipe to it the actuator is not on it right now i took it off i was messing around with the valve so same situation as the quick time performance where i bent the valve i actually tried to reinforce it and i bent that too um i bent the shaft in this once too and i straightened it it doesn't seal good anymore so i took this off problem with the boost activated ones is you have to be in boost before they open. So you get into two step, two step starts before you have any kind of boost. So as you're building it, this will open, but the first couple of shock waves hit this valve and bend it right open, no problem. So that leads me to where I am today. I'm setting up this valve, which is a vacuum actuated, normally closed valve. So this will stay closed unless vacuum is applied to the actuator. So what this will do for me, is I'll be able to send a vacuum signal to the actuator that's triggered off of my ECU. So I can set different parameters to open this up. This will allow the cutout to be open before I even get into two-step. It should open fast if everything works the way I want it to. To do this, I'm going to need to run a vacuum tank. So to set up a vacuum tank, I converted this old CO2 cylinder put threads on it, and this will be hidden in the uh, fender well. Then that'll feed vacuum to the MAC valve, allowing this to open whenever I want it to. So I'm going to set the ECU to open up anything above 3,500 RPMs or 90% throttle. Now that might change as I get driving it and if I need it to open or close at different times, but as long as I have vacuum in the tank, this will always open. One thing with this setup is you won't be able to keep the cutout open. It will close on you as soon as you get past some parameters. So if you want to cruise around the parking lot with your open dump, you can't do that. An easy way to get around that is in the output line of the MAC valve to install a small ball valve. You close this ball valve. The vacuum will be held into the actuator and the valve will be held open. If you need it to be shut, then shut the ball valve and the actuator will shut instantly. All right, so I guess there's nothing left to do than to start installing this and I'll show you the process of how I do this and, and all the steps you need to take if this is something you would like to set up onto your mega squirt system. So I got the vacuum cutout test fitted in here. I opted to cut out the three bolt flange that was on the quick time performance and the one that I welded onto the boost cut out and I went with two V-band clamps. This way, if anything happens to this cutout, I can quickly take this apart and I have another uh, half of V-band set up with a cap. So I can just block this off and it'll be gone. The next step is gonna be running a vacuum line to the cutout and then getting all the controls set up for it. So one other thing I did 
as I opted to bring this up into the transmission tunnel just a little bit so that way it can't be seen from just looking underneath the car. All right, so on your Mac valve, you got three ports. Port one will go to your vacuum source. Port two will go to your cutout. And three will either be left open or going to your ball valve to hold the cutout open. All right, so here's the vacuum tank. I've got it tucked inside of the driver's side wheel well. I'll put the plastic back on after I'm done and you'll never even see it. So I just made a bracket, a couple three inch exhaust clamps, and then it goes to a T. The main line coming in is tapped into where the uh, brake booster gets its vacuum. And this line right here is going to the solenoid or the Mac valve. This I'm going to upgrade. This is all I had in the garage at the time. So for testing, that's what I put on there. Here is the brake booster line. Here's the check valve. And then I just teed into it here. And I also installed a second check valve just to make sure that no boost leaks by. I've never had any problems with the brakes fading under boosts, but um, I don't know, I guess just being cautious. And then both that feeds, it's kind of hard to see. There's no light here. But the line just goes through the fender and to the top of the tank. So I didn't get a video of the Mac valve install, but that's just behind this panel with the vacuum lines running to it. This right here is the ball valve that'll keep the cutout open. So if it's in this position, it's completely controlled by the Mac valve and the cutout will open and close as the ECU tells it to. If you bring this lever down, now the cutout will open when the ECU tells it to, but it won't allow it to close, keeping the vacuum into the line going to the cutout. This will allow the cutout to stay open indefinitely as long as you don't have a vacuum leak in the system. So in Tuner Studio, all you need to do is go to Advanced Engine tab, Programmable on-off outputs, pick the output that you're using. Mine is going into the Nitrous 2 output. And then all you have to do is set the parameters that you would like your cutout to open at. So right now, I'm just having it opening at TPS and the threshold is 10% uh, with a 5% hysteresis. That is only set like that so I don't have to rev the crap out of the engine while it's sitting here in the garage and I can test it. Once I get this out onto the street and figure out exactly what it's going to be at, I'll have it also set by RPM. Um, but for right now, it, it'll, it'll just stay the way it is until I can figure out how exactly I need to do it.